Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk, and today we're going to be talking about Ghostbusters Afterlife. So Ghostbusters Afterlife came out on November 19, 2021, and is a sequel to Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, and it ignores the 2016 Ghostbusters. Today has a new 4K release out that we will be discussing. So Matt, what did you think of Ghostbusters Afterlife? Uh, overall, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, especially, I didn't even see 2016. No, um, me neither. And coming off that, I am very, very happy. Great job. I, great casting. Great story. I mean, I guess it's kind of similar to the first one if you really put it on paper. But hey, if, if it's not broken, you don't fix it. And so. I feel like that this is what the fans, especially us who have been wanting, is a movie like this that just pays homage to the original. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got, you know, it's got some cameos and stuff. We won't spoil anything, but it, it just really feels like this was a lot of love into it. And Jason Reitman has said that Ivan Reitman, the director, was from the originals, was on set with them the whole time. So it, he said it was like a family movie all around. The movie's about family. You know, it's about. Um, Carrie Coon's character moving her family to the Midwest. She has no money and she needs to move and her father who we uh, is a past character left them a farm and now it's all about what that family is going to do. It's a dirt farm. It's a dirt farm, <laughs> pretty much. And, you know, we get some great, great supporting roles by Paul Rudd, but I really think, you know, who shines in this is uh, Mackenzie Grace as Phoebe. I think yeah. that she is amazing in this movie. Yeah, she would definitely be considered the star. Even You would think uh, Wolfhard, the Stranger Things kid, him being in it, you'd think maybe he would be the lead, but uh, no. No, he takes a back seat to her. Yeah, he does. And uh, another great... I love the uh, podcast in this. His yeah, role is cool. great. You're yeah, gonna the, it was the two of them. They, they were tag team in basically the whole movie. Yeah. And Paul Rudd's in this, so Paul Rudd's never bad. You're yeah, not gonna Paul be... Rudd is a sweetheart. I love him. Yeah. He's the best. He's hysterical in this oh movie. He's so funny. He has some of the <laughs> biggest laughs. Uh, yeah. But I know you were sitting next to me when we saw this in the movies a few months ago, but I could not stop laughing when the little mini Marshmallow Man popped up. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, I and guess. I don't know. I thought that was hysterical. I don't know if my sense of humor is like a child or something, but I just couldn't stop laughing at it. I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. It was, act it was embarrassing the way you were laughing in the theater at that. I know. I was, I was like a little girl. and I, you know, It's all right. I loved it. <laughs> this movie got me. I got a little emotional at the end. Like, you know, I saw, oh, some, yeah. I saw some people saying that they relied too much on nostalgia but i eat nostalgia for breakfast so it's you Love know for me it, yeah, yeah i couldn't get enough of it i thought the movie was great you know it's a phenomenal movie if you're a ghostbusters fans of the first two movies then this is definitely a movie you're gonna like don't hesitate to see it you know i mean if you're not a ghostbusters fan and this is your first introduction to ghostbusters i really think it's gonna be a great introduction for a new generation yeah i mean it adds on to the other two and it explains a little bit what was going on in the originals but i mean you don't have to see the originals to see this but it would definitely help and fill in some blanks yeah but if they do decide to make a sequel to this which i would be fully on board for i really think that the new cast that we have that they have set in place is a really good core for a film and you could definitely go forward with this Absolutely. um they definitely didn't close the door but they also didn't leave it open it's just it's possible that they could do it as a standalone movie, it would still work, but it's still, anyway, it, we could definitely get more out of this franchise, and well, I'm all on board with that. So, before we get into the physical media side of things, from a story perspective, Matt, what would you give this movie out of 10? I'm going to go 9 out of 10. 9 I, out of 10, that's but, pretty high. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. There was a few things that I would change, but uh, other than that, it, excellent movie. Yeah, I'm also going to actually go uh, 9 out of 10 out of this. Um, I think it's the second best in the franchise, better than Ghostbusters 2, and I haven't seen 2016, so I can't comment on it. But other than the original, I think this is definitely the second best going forward. Matt here got the new 4K Ghostbusters Afterlife made by Sony. So Matt, you watched this last night, and what did you think about it? Um, It was... Absolutely amazing. It was stunning. The the Sony never disappoints us with their 4K releases and again, they didn't disappoint us here. 
the the blacks were very black i have a lg oled so the blacks are very black it just it pops the the colors pop it the atmos track is unbelievable you know so you can't go wrong if you like the movie i definitely suggest picking up the 4k we compared it with the blu-ray copy and the 4k copy is definitely a step up especially with that hdr so i highly recommend it so as far as extras go, we were actually going through all these. They all work before this. There's plenty of them. There's a making of Ghostbusters Afterlife, exploring all the gadgets in this movie is in there, as well as deleted scenes, a Ghostbusters retrospective with all the original cast, which is awesome, and Ivan Reitman, and there was also uh, what they expect on Ghostbusters going forward. Mm -hmm. And also, Matt wants to talk about the packaging on this and also the other version. Right, so I thought it was a little strange that they didn't do a steelbook with this. So I believe the the steelbook version came with all of the other movies. It was like $90. It had Ghostbusters 1, 2, 2016, and then Afterlife. So as far as getting Afterlife by itself on 4K, uh, you only get the slipcover version. Um, but it's just your basic slipcover, your basic black case... You got your 4K disc, your digital copy, and your Blu-ray. Okay, so that's awesome. I mean, that's all. so either you can get the full packaging with all of the movies, or you can just get it solo like this. So, Matt, since I haven't actually watched it, only I've only watched the extras, what would you give this 4K Blu-ray today out of 10? Um, again, the disc, I would say, is a 9 to a 10 out of 10. It, it, it's a Sony disc, so need I say more? Um, packaging, I... I'm a sucker for slipcovers. I like slipcovers. I, I hate when I don't get a slipcover when there is one available. Blu-ray, I didn't watch the whole movie. I just compared it to the 4K, but if you're buying a 4K, I, I don't really watch the Blu-ray. All right, everyone. So thanks for joining us here today on our film and 4K review of Ghostbusters Afterlife. If there's any recommendations on any 4Ks you would like us to review, please comment in the uh, comment section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and tell all your friends. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters.